Good morning. It's a beautiful, very brisk morning here in Montana. It is, I think, seven degrees, so it's not like it's very warm. The sun is coming up and that's starting to feel really good, but my toes are getting cold. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you today about something that's really important. Actually, I think there's a lot of things that are really important with goats. So I probably say that a lot, but I'm passionate about helping you raise healthy goats and to do the best that you can with the knowledge that you have. And, and then by gaining more knowledge, you can do even better. So that's important. And today I wanted to talk to you about the, what I believe are the top four deadly mistakes that you can make as a goat owner, as a new goat owner, and even if you have owned goats for several years, these things can actually crop up after you've been a goat owner for several years because they're a compounding effect. Like they, they build up and then suddenly you have this huge problem on your hands. And so I don't think it's just for new goat owners. It, you could have owned goats for several years and, and it could be a problem. So I wanted to talk to you about that today. So I believe that there are four mistakes that can really wreak havoc with your goats. And I'm gonna start with number four. Could we do a video together, Olivia? Would you smile for the camera? You're kind of shy, aren't you? I think we can do it, okay? Can you help me? All right, number four. I believe that this mistake is an important one and it is not keeping good records for your goat herd. And, you know, I always think, oh, I'll remember that because it is such a profound moment, you know, when they have their kids or the problems that they have. But the reality is, <laughs> when the time comes to remember, especially, you know, weeks go by, a month goes by, more things happen. There's just absolutely no way that, please don't chew on my hair. Thank you. It was Kit last time. Now it's you chewing on my hair, Opal. Okay, so there's no way that you'll be able to remember if you don't write it down. And so having really good records is important. So these records, you know, keeping records of when your goats are sick, how you treated them and what worked, the symptoms that you saw, uh, when they kitted, how they kitted, you know, if, was there problems when they had kids? Um, what issues did they present with? And, and you know, if you have a doe, what do you need to say, Opal? If you have a doe that continually has problems and is continually losing, you know, her kids in birth or is maybe um, can't support more than one kid and she always has three or things like that, you need to have records that show that through the years so that, you know, after several years of this happening, you can say, you know, this isn't working with this one. I We, we better get rid of her and, and get a better better quality dough than this one because it's heartbreaking when those things happen and and it's not fun to have to deal with so minimizing those problems and and being able to pay attention to those details because you have kept good records is really important and and it'll, it'll really give you a peace of mind as, as you just go through the years of goat ownership okay mistake number three is not understanding goat nutrition it's really important to realize that goats, especially goats that are that are in milk, goats that are pregnant, goats that have kitted, that are about to kid, and um, breeding stock, so uh, your bucks, when they go into rut, and just th throughout all the year, goats need really good nutrition. When they get deficient, with uh, their minerals, it really will affect their health. And when they are low in those minerals, it, it's like, again, this trickle down effect. They're not getting the nutrition that they need. So therefore, they are um, more susceptible to other problems. And then when you get in the middle of the winter months, when it's cold and their body is really relying on what their, their food source to keep them healthy, warm, and happy, it's not there and then they get pneumonia or, or you know just things that just will start to crop up because they're not getting essential 
uh, vitamins and minerals that their body requires. And, and so it really, you know, good quality hay is, is your main source of food for them. Now, if you live in an area where you have them on pasture, and they're able to browse and, and get their nutrition that way and in its in its sufficient area for them to you know to browse around and and move um, around in and get that from then by all means that is that's great but up north uh, most of us that live up no north have to you know store our hay uh, store the the, the grass <laughs> in in the form of hay for the winter months and feed it that way and so that will be a key portion the most important and the big, largest portion that you will be feeding your goats is hay it's not grain grain is not the majority of what you will be feeding your goats and if you are mostly just feeding your goats grain you need to swap that so that they're getting hay. That hay is really important um, because of how their rumens are set up and the way that they digest their food. And high diets of grain is actually not beneficial. It, it will more than likely cause harm to your goats. And, and yes, you do give grain um, to to supplement and to give them the, the energy requirements that they need when they are developing babies and when um, they are in milk. But it, it, as far as just their, their main source of, of what they're eating, that will be hay. But just like the food that we humans eat, you know, we can't as humans uh, expect to get all our vitamin and mineral intake from the food we eat. We would have to be eating like how many servings of vegetables and fruit a day to, to get what we need. And, and it's really kind of unrealistic, sadly, which it's a sad thing that we're at that point, but that's just the way it is. And so as humans, we take supplements, we take our vitamins and minerals and, and take that along with our food to, to kind of make up for those, the, the lack of that in our food. So with the goats, it's the same way. You have to have minerals set out for your goats and and it needs to be free choice do not top dress it on on their feed they won't get what they need have it out free choice so that they can get it whenever they need it whenever and for how much they need and so they will you know self-medicate in a way when they need it and so i guess really what it comes down to is you providing your goats with the best nutrition possible so that when the the opportunity arises for them to to get sick when they are having they're going through their kidding process and all of that they won't be going and getting you know ketosis and uh and milk fever and they won't be getting pregnancy toxemia and those things that are actually nutrition related um, in pregnancy and after pregnancy so just the bottom line is good nutrition is essential for goat care don't be lax in this okay the second thing that i believe is one of the deadliest mistakes that goat owners make with their goats is not knowing what to do when their goat gets sick i already talked about nutrition nutrition will really help you combat your goats getting sick and yet sometimes they just get sick you know just like just like us humans, sometimes we just get sick, despite doing all the right things, right? Okay, so it's the same with goats. But when they get sick, what do you do? And and not knowing what to do is is very costly. Goats are pretty fragile in a way because it's like they're they're very strong. They're strong. They push through. They push through. They push through, and then it feels like suddenly they got sick and died. But in reality, they were developing these problems over a long period of time and really just pushing through and doing their best. And then it suddenly came to a point where they couldn't handle it anymore and, and it all fell apart and then they got sick. So you may be thinking, well, what in the world can I do about this? When my goat gets get sick, okay, what can I do? Well, there's a lot of resources out there for you. There really is. And, and so really it just comes down to knowing your goats, first of all, 
Now, the first thing that you can do with this is to spend time with your goats. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend time with their goats, right? <laughs> but really, you need to know your goats and know their personalities, know what they're like so that when they're off, you can immediately see that and do something about it. So you need to be using, every time you're around your goats, you need to be using your five senses. You need to be watching them. Are they off by themselves? Are they acting differently? Are they, um, you know, what, what are what are you seeing that's wrong with them? Then you need to be um, using your hearing. What are you hearing differently about them? Are they making noises they shouldn't? Are they um, being more vocal? Are they are there rumens? Are are you not hearing sounds from their rumen? And then use your sense of smell. Is there a foul smell emanating from them, <laughs> from their, you know, when they burp up? Is it a, a smell that is not a normal goat smell? Uh, you, if you need, you know, like even taste. If you're milking your goats, is their milk tasting normal or is it tasting off? That may indicate some problems. And you can use your sense of touch, you know, when you're milking. Are their udders hot? Are they, um, are there swelling, you know, in their joints? Feeling um, their rumen, their stomach, and you can just, I guess, be willing to use your five senses when you're around your goats and pay attention to what is going on. So what do you do? when your goat gets sick. Well, it's important that you act quickly because like I said, they are, they push through so long, most likely, and they've just gotten to the point where they can't hold it in any longer and now they're sick and now it's serious. So you need to act quickly. But I wanted to read this to you. This blessed me so much. I just wanted to read this to you. I got this message on Instagram this last week and it said, just wanted to reach out and say thank you. I am a first time goat owner and bought your goat binder last night after researching one of the bucks acting super weak and lethargic. I was able to figure out what was wrong from your symptom tracker and I am forever grateful. You have no idea how much joy that brings me knowing that that she got the resources into her hands to figure out herself what was wrong and to treat it. And then she went on to say, the bonus parasite pages you have are extremely beneficial. All goat owners should have that since it is so common. And so that really just shows how you as a goat owner can take that power back into your own hands and become educated in your goat's health and what to do about it. Because I, I know that feeling, how you can feel so helpless, like, you know, my goat's sick. Where, where do I even start? I, I don't even know what to do. What, what, it, what do I do? Where do, what do I even do first? And so I know that feeling of just that hopelessness, that helplessness, but know that that doesn't have to be the case. That you can have in your own hands the proper tools to, to really get this figured out and to take back that, that, I guess sense of power. And I don't mean like, ha ha ha, I'm going to take over the world power. I mean, just that feeling like, yes, I can do this. Yes, this is possible. Yes, I can do this. <laughs> and I love that feeling. So what she just mentioned about the bonus parasite pages <laughs> that you have are extremely beneficial. All goat owners should have that since it's so common. Okay, so <laughs> that brings me to my number one deadliest mistake that goat owners make. And that is parasites. Parasites are the leading killer in goats and I really believe also that parasites lead to the second leading killer in goats which is pneumonia. When a goat is not getting the nutrition they need they are more susceptible to worms and when they're more susceptible to worms and have a high worm load, a too high of a worm load, they will get sick in other ways and one I guess easy way for them to get sick or one just common way for them to get sick is with pneumonia and pneumonia can kill a goat in four hours. You can go to bed at night and tuck your goats in and say goodnight to them and then the next morning they're dead. They, that overnight it, it got them and so that <laughs> really brings to light how important it is to uh, know how to look for worms, 
how to see if your wor your goats are wormy, to be able to check their fecals on a very regular basis so that you know what's normal for a goat. Now, some goats are more uh, resistant to worms and those are the goats you really want to keep. You want to breed goats that are resistant to worms. And there are, so they may have a different worm count than, than the, the goat next door. And so you need to know what's normal for each goat. And then when those numbers change and, and it's a higher worm load than normal, that it is just too much and it's causing them problems, then you worm that goat. And that is the key in this. You don't worm a goat. You don't worm your whole herd all at once. You don't just blanket worm. You need to worm your goats that need to be wormed and you need to worm them correctly. If you're not worming them correctly, you're just creating super worms and that is not good. That is what is causing a uh, kind of a worldwide resistance to the chemical wormers that are out there. Now, it is good to use natural methods to control worms and to keep your goats healthy. Because remember, I said that you know a healthy goat will be able to fight off worms more uh, more than than other goats. So, keeping them healthy through natural herbal worm supplements is is good. It's important. But if you do get a high worm load and your goat is having an issue with worms, you have to go the chemical route and get rid of them. You just have to do it. You, it, it is deadly if you don't. And there are different breeds that are more susceptible to worms as well. In the winter up here, you know, right now, our ground is pretty cold, it's frozen. The worm activity is not happening out in our pastures. So they're not out in the pasture getting more worms, but that doesn't mean that there's not worm issues because some worms kind of go into hibernation and then they crop up in the winter months and, and cause problems. Or when a goat is pregnant and then they have their kids, like right around that time when they're about to have their kids, right before and right after, uh, it's the perfect situation and setting for the worms. And so they hatch and they have a heyday and they can really damage your goats. So it's important to have a um, worming warming technique and a warming protocol, a warming plan set up for around kidding time as well. So really, this is important. You have to, you have to figure out this worm situation for you and your goats, your area. Now, it's really important that you don't, you know, send me an email or ask in the comments below, well, what is your worming protocol and um, what should I worm with? Well, how should I worm? What do you do so that I can do it? It doesn't work that way. Every area is different. You know, down south <laughs> in the, the East Coast, where it is so warm year round, uh, the worms are much different than up here. And you will probably have a higher load of barber pole worms and, and issues like that. And so, and, and it just the worm cycle just never stops because it never freezes and it never kills them off or, or just, um, just stops that cycle. So, and, and wormers and chemical wormers are, um, they work differently in different areas. Some, some areas, you know, certain wormers are just not working anymore. So you need to get in contact with your vet, with local um, people in your area that are raising goats that, or your local extension agent. You need to get in contact with people like that and ask them in your area what is working and what isn't. And, and use those, those uh, wormers that are working. So there you have it. My four top deadly mistakes that goat owners make. And I hope that list was really helpful and, and encouraging because you have the knowledge now to not make these mistakes or to change so that you're not still making these mistakes. And, and I just encourage you to take this information and make it your own and to really become confident in your goat ownership. Our goats deserve that and they deserve you. 
you're a great goat owner. You love them so much. And, and it's really possible to raise healthy and happy goats. So <sighs> go forth with this knowledge. <laughs> go and scratch those goats. And I'll see you in that next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week.